Okay, it is great to see you all joining from around the world. A lot of you are from, wow, all over Italy, Kazakhstan, Argentina, Germany, so forth and so forth, Mexico, Peru. Hi, everyone. Hola. So I'm uh, Pete Novak, country manager for US and Canada for Cambridge Assessment English, and we'll be your host today. Uh, we are pleased to welcome you to the Study in U.S. and Canada webinar series, specifically the Exploring Undergraduate University Programs Across Canada session in partnership with Western University. By way of introductions, you are likely familiar with Cambridge Assessment English since many of you have taken or are preparing for one of our Cambridge English exams. For those who are not familiar with Cambridge Assessment English, we are part of Cambridge Assessment, a university department of the University of Cambridge. For well over 100 years, we have been producing a variety of global standard exams and supporting the communities of primary, secondary, and higher education teachers and learners. Our mission is educational to help people to learn English and prove their skills to the world. So we're not just about measuring English, we're about supporting learners throughout their education and careers, making sure that they have the skills they need to succeed. We do this by empowering the authentic communicative ability through assessment, covering four skills and testing language use in the modern world. We produce world-leading standardized English exams, which are taken by more than 6 million students annually. They're used by more than 25,000 universities, employers, and government departments all over the world for admissions, recruitment, graduation, and a whole host of other purposes. As part of a university ourselves, we have been supporting admissions officers all over the world with exams such as B2 First, C1 Advanced, and IELTS. IELTS is the high stakes on-demand English exam for study abroad and immigration, while B2 First, C1 Advanced, and C2 Proficiency are the most rigorous English proficiency exams designed to be incorporated in your English learning so that you're well prepared for the next stage in your life. This webinar is not about English proficiency exams, yet participants always ask us about it. So let me just take a minute to elaborate. You're now welcome to apply to just about any Canadian university, specifically undergraduate, as in bachelor's programs, with a C1 advanced or C2 proficiency, including today's host, Western University. To see all your options, take a look at the database on the Cambridge English website at this link right below here. And then take a look at the institution's website for more details, because we do not list on the Cambridge website the most granular requirements. Sometimes minimums are noted based on minimum Cambridge English scale score. For that, consider B2 first results are between 160 and 179 on the Cambridge English scale. Um, C1 advanced ranges from 180 to 199 and C2 proficiency is above 200. So why do these details matter? For example, you can apply directly to Western with 176, which is almost a C1's passing grade, okay? So across Canada, there may also be English language conditional options available with lower scores. Therefore, it is important for you to check the institution's website for more details. And if for some reason, Cambridge English qualifications are not noted, contact the institution and us for assistance. Again, this workshop is not about Cambridge. In fact, you are in for a treat uh, today to learn more about how to find your program in Canada. With that, it is my pleasure to introduce our presenter today. Please welcome Carolyn Ford, Director of International Undergraduate Recruitment at Western University.
Thank you, Pete, for that uh, kind introduction. And uh, give me just a moment to uh, get us going with the slides that we've got. And so, yes, our theme today, uh, exploring your study options at the undergraduate level here in Canada. Um, there are so many topics that we could have done for this session, but really one of the things that we wanted to share with you all today was how to find programs that are of interest to you. And uh, as I get started, um, imagine a map of North America. Think of the Great Lakes region. And in your map, think of, um, do you know where the city of Toronto is? Do you know where the great city of Detroit is? The campus of Western University is uh, pretty much on a line between Detroit and Toronto. But of course, the lands where I'm presenting from today had First Nations and Indigenous peoples prior to the creation of cities like Toronto, London, Western's campus, and Detroit. So for that reason, I would like to acknowledge that Western University is located on the traditional lands of the Anishinaabek, Haudenosaunee, Lenapiwak, and Attawandran peoples, whose traditional lands I'm presenting from today. If you're interested in learning more about Indigenous Canada, histories, languages, cultures, just wanted to uh, share this information with you that the University of Alberta offers a free online course called Indigenous Canada. And care of the link that I've shared below, you would be able to take that online course. If you become an undergraduate at a Canadian institution, all of the international student services and, and as part of the activities that you would have available to you at your local campus is that those campuses and those cities are very much connected to traditional lands, peoples, and cultures. And so you would have a chance to get to know Indigenous Canada more as an international student in Canada. So that might be something that would be of interest to you to explore even as you're exploring undergraduate programs. Now, in terms of myself, here at Western University, I've been the Director of International Undergraduate Recruitment since 2013. I have a team of six international applicant advisors, and we work with prospective undergraduate students, students about to um, complete high school, because our purpose is to help you decide what is a good fit for you in terms of your undergraduate programs in Canada. I've had the uh, for fortune of living, working, um, and studying in a variety of places around the world, and that certainly helps inform my work and the work of my team in getting to know students and considering your university program options. Now, you're probably um, uh, attending this presentation because uh, you already know something about Canada and you're already thinking that this is um, a good option for you. Um, the rich cultural diversity, the opportunity to work on or off campus uh, while you're in your undergraduate program. And last but not least, um, there are postgraduate work permits available to students who have completed diploma or degree programs in Canada. Now, I've just noted that I've got some subtitle action going on, so hopefully I have just uh, stopped that now. As we dive into the agenda and resources, I just want to point out that we're sharing some resources that we believe will be helpful to you in this presentation. But at the same time, I would not want to claim that this is an exhaustive list. Um, prospective students, you are free to mix and match uh, resources beyond what we're sharing with you today. And so for every student out there, I want to reassure you that Canada has something for you that matches the level that you're at. Whether you're completing your high school diploma, or you're a university transfer applicant. For viewers completing your high school diploma, of course, there are a variety of diploma types around the world, which could be equivalent to grade 11, grade 12, 
or in some cases, even grade 13. If you're grade 11 equivalent, such as the countries I've, I've listed uh, in next to this bullet point, then you know, your options could include continuing on to do year one of, of university in your country of residence and then proceeding to Canada. Or you could come to Canada early and do a college diploma program or a grade 12 foundation year prior to beginning your university degree. If you're coming from a country where the education system is grade 12 equivalent, you're ready to apply to year one of university in Canada already. Mexico, US curriculum, Vietnam upper secondary school, or the West Africa exam uh, certificate, among other types, are equivalent to grade 12. Now, there may be viewers in the audience that are completing A-levels, or you're taking some advanced placement exams, or you're completing international baccalaureate or the Caribbean advanced proficiency exams. Those are considered to be grade 13 equivalent, and therefore your exam scores in those subjects could earn you credits for coursework that are at university year one level. And if you're already studying at a university, then of course you would be a university transfer applicant. So whatever level you are currently at, completing that high school diploma, currently at university, um, completing a, an English as a second language program or college program, you know, Canada has something for you at a variety of levels. And so uh, before we uh, dive into the resources themselves, if we could just pop up this poll to have a sense of um, where you are around the world. So this is exciting to uh, have a sense of, I'm here in Canada as I present this session today, I, I'm sitting here in a snowy landscape and it's nice to have a sense of, of where the viewers are. Give it a couple more seconds. And looks like we've uh, got some interesting spread around the Americas, Europe, and, uh, and Asia. Excellent, excellent. And so, yep, you should be able to see the poll results now uh, as I do. All right, well, with that in mind, let's continue to proceed. All right, as we continue along, I'm going to talk a little bit about the, the importance of doing a robust undergraduate program search. I'll, I'll share some profiles of students who are looking for programs in Canada. We'll introduce the resources themselves, and then we'll uh, recap at the very end. A key theme that I want to sound out for all of you is, is the importance of doing your own research in accordance with your own priorities. And part of the reason for that is the more methodical that you are in doing this, you know, you're going to create a better list of programs that are of interest to you. And then the sooner you start this search, the better. It's, um, it's always uh, sad or disappointing to be working with prospective students and to have them discover that dream program a day after the deadline to apply. And it is my hope that attending this session today will help you avoid that outcome. I want to note the importance of self-reflection, that for each one of you that you have a very good sense of your interests first. Uh, in other words, um, I would encourage you to not take your transcript to an applications counselor and ask, what programs am I eligible to apply to? For my team and I, every time this happens to one of us, well, Western University has 400 pro programs. It's um, not necessarily helpful for us to come back to you and say, well, you're, you're eligible to apply to any one of 400 programs. It's uh, very important to be able to narrow that list where possible. As you're building a list of prospective programs, and as you're adding things to that list, I hope every one of you has that sense of match or fit 
that you're seeing a good alignment between your goals and your interests and the programs that you have put on your personal list. The decision that you're making is um, one with lots of uh, criteria, multi-criteria. You're likely not simply looking for the best program or the most cost-effective program. You're likely looking for what's the best program in a certain location for which you meet the minimum admissions requirements and which you've got the financial capacity for. And so to cap it all off, your search doesn't have to be perfect, but it does need to be good. With that in mind, let's uh, meet our prospective students. We have six in total and three are available on this first page, this first slide. We have Priya, Emmanuel, and Maria coming from three different countries, and they have three different possible programs of interest. They also have some different ideas about needs and requirements, size of campus or affordability, or whether there's an interest in completing an English as a second language program prior to beginning the academic program. We also have Wen, Yusuf, and Alejandra. Once again, three different countries represented, as well as three different academic programs of interest. And once again, these three students have different needs and requirements with respect to a possible location in Canada, uh, or in terms of the mode in which the program is delivered in person or online, and then also uh, location of campus and then the size of the city community where the campus is located. So six different students, six different programs, six different countries, and then some additional details about their personal interests, needs, and requirements. And so where should these six students start? Well, they should be thinking about their academic passion or program, the location of study, the academic programs themselves, as well as the, the community and experience of, of the co-curricular and extracurricular uh, aspects to those programs. And every one of you is unique, so you likely have other factors that are important to you too. And with that, let's dive into these resources. The first one I'm going to recommend is Universities Canada. Pretty much any university in Canada belongs to this organization. And collectively, we create a website that has accurate program information. Once a year, all of us as universities share updated program lists to this website so that it is available for you to search it. So this is a great starting point for you. If you have a sense of what you want to study in Canada, but you don't have a, a sense of where in Canada or which universities offer that program, the University Study website can help you build that long list. It's free to use and you're not trading any of your privacy data or having to do a sign up to get access to this information. There is also the EduCanada website. You would be able to uh, explore a variety of things, such as resources on budgeting, working, and then planning tips for every aspect of the before, the during, and the after your studies. If you have a sense, even at the early stage, of where in Canada you would like to be, but then not knowing where the programs are, you can always start the search at EduCanada and by selecting a specific province and it will allow keyword searches. Now there are also third party websites other than Universities Canada or EduCanada. There are a variety of these. Uh, the one I'm gonna call your attention to today is Study in Canada. Now um, there's a bit of a change here in the sense that to get the best use of this site, you would be doing a sign up or registration, so you are sharing some of your privacy data. But one of the key features of interest in the Study in Canada platform will be that 
the company that has compiled all this information has really gone the extra mile to try and gather together as many scholarship award details as possible. So if, if in tandem with the program search, you are also looking for scholarship award opportunities, the Study in Canada platform could be a very good tool for you to use. Next is School Match Canada. And this also would have a sign up required. Of all the resources that I'm introducing or sharing today, uh, this is the one resource um, because it is a private company and because it is providing a service. Um, they, they would be, if you sign up for a match report, they will have a small fee payable online um, by, by credit card in Canadian dollars. But what they are trying to do is um, they have aggregated information from university and college diploma programs. They've taken statistical information from Statistics Canada. They've also measured social media comments by current students in current programs. If you sign up to receive a School Match Canada report at either the university or college level, you would answer a lot of questions about your programs of interest, other, other things about campus and community that are key features for you. And that at the end of that entire process, uh, within 24 to 48 hours, you receive a tailored report about which programs are recommended for you based on this combination of your interests, statistical information, program information, and what current students are saying about their programs. And so this could be a, an excellent resource for you. Um, but I would also mention um, in the viewers today, if there are any high school guidance counselors and you are finding a, a lot of students in your schools that are now searching Canada options and you, you don't really have a sense of what options are available in Canada at the moment, one of the things I see Canadian high schools doing um, all over the country is in order to support their students in their university searches is that I see high schools and entire school boards working with School Match Canada to create a membership or a, a profile so that students at grade 11 and grade 12 levels can get access to their own School Match Canada report. So if there are any high school guidance counselors in the audience and you're interested in getting to know Canada better and supporting your students as they do a Canada search, School Match Canada could be a good resource for your high school um, university pl placement and guidance, excuse me, staff. Next would be provincial resources. Each, re each province within Canada will have its own website and set of resources that allow you to compare different institutions. Now, one of the things that's important to know about Canada is um, we have just over 100 higher education institutions at the university level. The vast majority of them are publicly supported. When you come to Canada for an academic program, and you're applying for a study permit, and, and we won't go into study permits in great detail, is that the work of, of having an offer of admission to a Canadian university, having a letter of acceptance that lists the designated learning institute number of, of the institution, is that provinces confirm what are the institutions that are of sufficient accredited standard to welcome international students to programs? And it is the federal government of Canada that takes care of the study permit approval process. So um, quite often my team and I will, will, will receive questions about, is this an accredited institution? Um, in Canada, we don't use the word accredited, we use the word designated. So in your search, You'll just want to note the programs and the institutions that I'm looking at. Does it have a DLI? As long as it does, you know that you are going, going to a quote unquote accredited institution in Canada. And 
It is by way of these provincial resources and then filtering down into uh, programs, diplomas, uh, degrees, and seeing what that designated learning institution number is, you will know you are going to an accredited institution. And so let's briefly um, uh, take a brief tour across the provinces to see what additional tools and resources available are available. We'll work our way from west to east, and so we'll start with British Columbia. And so you can visit the Study in BC portal, and that will provide general information about studying and living, but it can also introduce you to more detailed resources about schools, programs, costs, and scholarships. As you continue to do this search, um, and you flip over to the Education Planner site, if you get to the point where you have a short list of institutions and you're ready to apply, you would be able to reach those application portals and understand what the deadlines are by, by use of the Education Planner link. Continuing east, moving on now to the prairies and northern Canada, and certainly as we work our way across uh, Canada, I hope you see what I see, which is a gorgeous place, no matter where you are, to be living, working, and studying for your degree. Now, specifically in the prairies, uh, starting off with Alberta, you can visit the Study in Alberta platform, which would have all post-secondary options, college, university, and ESL. You will be able to search by program, and then um, once again, if you get to the point where you are ready to apply, you will be, um, you can follow the link to the application and you are, you are basically applying direct to institutions in Alberta. And continuing to move east, we'll cover Manitoba, Saskatchewan, Yukon and the Northwest Territories together. Now, there are fewer institutions overall for these regions of Canada. And so what you'll want to do to explore the options is you will go to the institutional websites directly. And so the resources that we've shared here allow you to get to each institution website directly. Continuing east to Ontario. Uh, one of the largest destinations for international students in Canada. One of the things we do in Ontario every year is we have a large in-person fair at the Metro Toronto Convention Centre, which takes place um, late September. Now, obviously, uh, this year, due to the coronavirus situation, the Ontario University's Fair was cancelled. Uh, but certainly we are hoping that the public health situation um, is much better in time for fall of 2021, uh, because this is the largest post-secondary education fair in the world with about 135,000 visitors uh, attending the Metro Toronto Convention Center. And if you are able to come to the fair, it is one of the best and quickest ways to meet all of the universities in Ontario in one place and speak directly to professors as well as admissions representatives. Now, we weren't able to do that in 2020, but we have resources online to take place, um, you know, to cover the fact that we weren't able to hold the fair in person. And so this web resource is the Ontario University's info site. Um, care of this link, you'll be able to find programs, create a university uh, shortlist, and then you would have the link on how to submit the application, which would be by way of the Ontario University's Application Centre. And then, of course, once the application is received from the Application Centre, they share your application with the Ontario University that you named for further action. I would like to uh, introduce one additional Ontario resource simply because um, many years ago, all of Ontario's universities um, made a conscious decision to collect and post data sets that could be of interest to you as a prospective student. 
very important data to understand, such as admissions averages into the program, um, success information, such as year one to year two retention ratios, as well as performance information with respect to graduate graduation rates and then employment. So success in gaining a career after graduation. Now, some data sets do take uh, years to collect. So in particular, the employment rates information, um, one of the standard measurement marks is two years after graduation. So, you know, if you're looking for the 2019 graduating class and, and how well are they employed, um, you'll be able to find that information later on, probably in mid 2021. And so the name of this data set is Common University Data Ontario. And this is something that you could choose to look at now or later on if you have offers of admission from two to three Ontario universities and you want to compare and contrast them. This Qudo data set is a great way to evaluate which Ontario University could be the right choice for you. And to the east of Ontario is Quebec. In Quebec, there are um, some grade 13 equivalent high school institutions called CEGEP. And if you uh, are interested in completing CEGEP in Quebec, you could come to this website to search by program and, and um, further criteria such as size, whether you're being educated in English or French, uh, financial aid, and even down to extracurricular information, such as which sports teams would you want to be uh, playing on while you're completing the SAGEF credential. Moving on to universities in Quebec, that it is Destination Université, that that website will allow you to explore all of the universities in Quebec. And then when you're ready, you can flip over to navigate the institution specific website. Once again, you have access to deadlines and application links all in one place. And continuing east onto the Atlantic Canada provinces. Um, this information is particularly timely this week because the universities in the Atlantic Canada provinces, they work together as an Atlantic Association of Registrars and Admissions Officers. And uh, once again, um, due to the coronavirus situation, in, in place of having campus open days, they uh, are working together to host a virtual tour. So if you would like to get to know your Atlantic Canada options, you have and, and you have some time this week, you could register for a virtual fair in the coming days. So um, this could be a high priority because it's the next what, six days after today that you would have a chance to attend these virtual tours. Now, specifically the provinces in Atlantic Canada, New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, Prince Edward Island, Newfoundland and Labrador. Now, in um, some of the provinces, you're going to see that what we have provided is a direct link to the university. While in others, New Brunswick and Nova Scotia, there's more than one university per province. And so you would be able to explore once again programs and then link directly to universities once you have a sense of where your programs of interest are offered. I'm going to round back out to EduCanada just to point out that once again, if you start with EduCanada, you can also proceed to provincial level resources. So it just all depends on where you would like to start. As you've worked your way through the resources that we've introduced up to now, you've likely created a long list. And now is the point in time where you're going to flip over and start looking at the university websites for the places that are on your long list. Now, the reasons why you're going to want to do this, um, well, if you're looking for the most up-to-date information from the university when it comes to academic programs, applications, deadlines, newly published scholarship information and competitions, it will always be important to come directly to the university website for that. 
And as you do that, you may find yourself crossing some universities uh, off the list, and therefore you're moving closer to a short list of three to five universities and programs. And then I'll just note that um, when you come to a university's website, you might start at the main website, but then um, the actual admissions, future students, prospective students, the website that you use for that might be a dedicated subsection of the main university website. And that is certainly true of the Western University website is that you come to the section that is welcome to Western in order to explore programs and admissions in greater detail. Now in the slides that follow, um, we're, we're going to provide sort of a recap of the information available. So in this slide, and you'll get a link to sort of this presentation um, later on, here is a brief summary by province, how to apply, whether, whether there is a centralized portal or whether you are applying directly to the institution. And then we have shared the website that you'll want to go to. Within Canada, of the 100 plus universities um, that, that there are, there is a subsection, a group called the U15. And the U15 is a group of research intensive universities in Canada. And so this is also a summary information slide to cover these research intensive universities, everything from Alberta to Waterloo. And just to note that in terms of application deadlines and scholarship deadlines, that these dates can be different. Some universities, there might not be a difference between the early consideration deadline or a general application deadline, but then for some universities, there is a difference between early or general. And part of the reason for that will be that some universities are admitting on a rolling basis. In other words, as soon as your application is complete, that university is willing to make an admissions decision. Now you'll have time to review this slide in, in more detail when you receive a copy of the presentation, but I would definitely call your attention to that right hand column about the major awards deadline. These are competitive scholarship deadlines by institution and you will note that these deadlines typically take place um, in many cases earlier than the general application or early consideration deadline. So I would recommend as a best practice that if you are applying to um, major scholarship competitions, that I would encourage you to get your application for admission in at roughly the same time as well. Now we haven't talked a lot about colleges within this uh, presentation, but there are colleges in Canada that also have um, the designation or accreditation to offer four year undergraduate degrees as well. And so we wanted to offer this summary of information uh, too, by province, and then how you would access the application or the website. And so there could be students that um, a four year university degree at a college program could be the right fit. And so we wanted to make sure that we shared this information as well. And I'll just briefly note for English uh, as a second language um, that of course, that is not usually academic credit by itself. You are, if you are doing an ESL program, you're doing so because um, you want to be, uh, you're either preparing to take a formal English uh, credential or exam, or um, in the case of the Cambridge program, it's, it's not just a test, of course, there's a whole learning program that is part of the experience. But if you are exploring ESL options within Canada, one of the things that you will find is that there could be an ESL program that comes with conditional admission to a diploma or degree program. And so really the two ways to explore that in more detail is to take your short list of universities and explore at their sites for their requirements, but you can also visit the Languages Canada website 
to explore English programs and start with that as a resource for further exploration. But things relating to ESL will tend to be very institution specific in Canada. Now let's uh, go back to our prospective students and let's take a look at what would they have found if they had used the resources that we've introduced as, as, um, as part of our presentation today. Coming back to Priya with the interest in, in chemical engineering and interested in um, a large campus in a metropolis, but not exactly sure where that would be. In her case, using the university study website was a great way to get a long list of engineering programs across the country. And as she made her way through the tools to come up on a short list, she discovered um, you know, a variety of places in Canada, Ryerson in Ontario, University of British Columbia in British Columbia, as well as McGill University in Quebec. Any one of those three and more would be great possible options for Priya. Now, in Emmanuel's case, he's interested in business. And of course, there are a huge number of business options in Canada, but he is looking for something that he would consider to be more affordable. So a tuition that is more along the lines of 10 to 20,000 uh, Canadian dollars per year, uh, as opposed to other business programs in Canada, which might charge anywhere from 25 to 55,000 Canadian dollars per year. Now, Emmanuel used EduCanada to explore programs and then to also get some information on scholarships and explore the affordability piece. The programs on his shortlist in Nova Scotia, Ontario, and Alberta do a better job of matching his price point of tuition that ranges between 10 and 20,000 Canadian dollars per academic year. Moving on to Maria and Nguyen. In Maria's case, um, now uh, sociology, psychology, with doing conditional admission via ESL first, there are going to be a variety of ways to do that in Canada. In her case, she used the EduCanada resource uh, to get started with her long list. And then as she worked her way through the resources, she has ended up with the University of Prince Edward Island, as well as institutions in Manitoba and Saskatchewan for her short list. Now, Wen's interests were a little bit different because he actually has relatives in Toronto. And so um, his specific resources that he made use of is that he took a look at Ontario University's info site and the Common University Data Ontario set uh, to explore which institutions in Ontario would fit his needs, but then also keep him fairly close to his uncle in Toronto. And so in his case, um, McMaster and Hamilton, the University of Toronto itself, or even Western University could all be good options for when. Rounding out our student lists, Youssef and Alejandra. Youssef was the only one of our prospective students who um, was, was really interested in completing the entire Bachelor of Science or Bachelor of Math degree online. And he was able to use the um, study in Canada site and using specific keyword filters to drill down to the fact that Waterloo, Athabasca and Thompson Rivers could all have programs in math, finance and um, applied math or commerce that could fit his interests and needs. And then lastly, Alejandra looking for a science or more specifically biology degree and then looking for a campus that is um, that is smaller and, and is a little bit more suburban or rural. And in her case, places in Ontario, Quebec, and New Brunswick could all fit the bill to have a smaller sized uh, campus, but then also offering the sciences that she is interested in. In her case, she started creating that long list with the university study site. If there is a key message that I could share with you in terms of your use of these resources and how you are searching for programs in Canada, 
I really do want to emphasize there's no substitute for doing your own research in accordance with your own priorities. Um, after all, uh, you can have your accountant do your taxes, but to completely outsource your university choice decision when you are the executive officer choosing you, uh, whether it's you or you and your parents as the executive officers choosing your university program, it is very important to know your needs and requirements and to be the leader in making that choice of degree program. And going back to the idea of that search decision as one that is taking um, not just one, not just two, but um, multiple criteria on board. As you're doing this, you're not just looking for the best academic program, you're likely looking for the best academic program that you can gain admission to for the time that you have available when you're doing all of these things, studying for grade 12 exams, having an eye on what your budget is, having a, an idea of sense of location and weather in Canada, as well as visa approvals and then other external factors that you're aware of that might not have come to mind to me in terms of your university choice decision. And of course, you're gonna have questions along the way. And I just wanna say that for, for all of the colleges and university programs in Canada, we are here to help. We all have applicant advising, information and counseling services available so that we can answer the questions that prospective students have. Uh, we want you to find the program in Canada that is right for you. So as I flip to the next slide, once again, this is going to be a great resource for you because it is a recap, at least for the University's 15 group, of either a website or an email address where you can reach out to ask and, and get answered additional questions about exploring programs in Canada. And with that, um, on behalf of Western University and, and thanking Cambridge Assessment English so much, um, we're so happy that we had the chance to share this information with you uh, today so that you have these tools and resources as you explore undergraduate program options in Canada. And so with that, Pete, if I could um, hand control back to you. Thank you, Carolyn. What a fantastic presentation, amazing resources. Um, yeah, we do have certainly a few minutes available for Q&A. Um, some of them have been answered. Um, just looking through the list, certainly many of you have been asking about uh, scholarships. But if you'd like to take a few minutes to answer some of them in, in uh, more detail or invite others. Well, so I mean, uh, let's start with scholarships, because of course, those those are always really, I mean, you know, scholarships and financial awards, those are always popular questions. Um, certainly, some of the resources we've shared today allow you to start doing a deeper dive for that. Um, specifically, the Study in Canada website will allow you to, to do a keyword search for awards. Um, it, you know, we could have done a whole hour session just covering the topic of scholarships and, and financial aid in, it, in its own right. So you're going to want to bounce between resources such as study in Canada. Um, if you use a government of Canada website, Global Affairs Canada, there are some Canadian government uh, sponsored scholarships as well. Um, but really you are also, as you have a sense of the top three to five programs in Canada that are of interest to you, that is where you are going to want to come to that university website to look at the dedicated information that they have available on scholarships as well. Um, I could say in a general way at the undergraduate level, there, there are going to be sort of two types that, that students are going to be looking for. Some scholarships will be automatic. And automatic means that when you apply for admission, if, if the university program extends you an offer, there will be an automated process that somewhere along the line, 
you would receive a scholarship notification letter for an admission scholarship that would have details about what is the, um, what is the value of that award, when does it get credited to your tuition accounts, um, and it will also, um, that, that scholarship offer letter will be fairly detailed as to terms and conditions. Uh, because if that admissions scholarship is, is offered to you as part of that admissions package, it will have those details about what the university expects your final marks or final average to be in order to proceed to receive that scholarship. So uh, automatic admissions scholarships are, are one category. And then um, in terms of that uh, overall resource slide that we shared for the universities 15, that um, there are high value awards. For a high value award that is offered by a specific university, you are always going to wanna go to the university website for that because the value of the award um, is it 50,000 Canadian dollars? Is it 100,000 Canadian dollars? Um, to understand the value of that award, um, when the application portal is open to receive um, your, your application to the scholarship, uh, to have a sense of the timeline as to when that decision about the scholarship, when will that take place? Um, to have a sense of those timelines, for the high value scholarships, you're always going to want to spend some quality time with the university website in question. And then um, some students have access to funding or potential scholarships in their uh, home country or country of residence. Now, obviously I would not be uh, an expert on those. So we could call that like a third category beyond the original two that I mentioned. Certainly, I encourage students to explore those uh, possibilities as well. Um, that doesn't even begin to scratch the surface on scholarships, uh, because as I said, you could probably do a whole hour just on the topic of scholarships and financial aid as well. But hopefully that, that, that little bit will help people get started in their search. Thank you, Carolyn. Um, wow, it, it, amazing resources. And, and honestly, to the point to the financial uh, category and scholarships, I'm sure we will be uh, running some additional webinars and sessions around that. So Carolyn and, and the, uh, the Western team, thank you so much for this workshop. This has been very informative with lots of resources. Um, so we hope that this is, this is helpful for you students. Um, and as you consider applying to North America, of course, as you are looking for your best fit, do consider Western University. In terms of finding your fit in North America, this webinar series will continue in January. Keep an eye out on the events on the cambridgeenglish.org slash events page. Uh, we will have additional events. Currently, there's uh, nothing listed yet for next year, but we will have a long list of events coming up. And as we come to the end of the webinar, you will see a 10 second pop-up survey when the event is closed. We would very much appreciate your feedback. So with that, dear students, we wish you all the best in your application process. And again, Carolyn, thank you so much for joining us today. Till next time, stay safe and goodbye.